being there and just able to identify and just focus on imagining the imagine how this would feel. I learned that we really, really strong people. Like yeah. we're fighters. GLAD is an amazing organization. We've been around for 60 years. It's a San Francisco institution. We meet families and individuals where they are. People who come off the street, our most vulnerable populations, come in for meals, they come in for support. They come in to get the services they need in that moment. I've been in San Francisco a long time and GLIDE has always been there in the community, uh, you know, connecting and coming up in conversation and addressing some of society's most pressing issues. I come in behind Cecil and Jan, two amazing founders of this organization, who built this organization on love, truth-telling, for the people, joy, and hope. My name is Jamie. Everybody called me JJ. I was born and raised in Oakland, California. Um, it was me, my mom, and my sister. Never really had a father figure around. From my impression as a kid, what I saw is what I thought was the right thing to do, was the cool thing to do. My name is Deshaun. I'm 24. I'm from the San Francisco Fillmore District. I'm from Eddie Rock Projects, so growing up, my community is mostly like African Americans, low poverty. I was raised by my grandma, so I don't know my mom or my dad. Not being able to have like a father figure, somebody I could look up to, I just felt like I needed a man in my life to push me, guide me. I made some bad decisions, got in trouble with the law, and that's how I ended up at Glide, Men in Progress. My name is Sandra Haggerty. I am now the program manager for Men in Progress. Men in Progress is an important service that we provide here at Glide. By teaching men how to control their anger and techniques to resolve conflict non-violently, we're empowering the men to have healthier relationships and teaching them effective communication skills and how to self-reflect and discover why they are angry. I chose Deshaun and JJ to go to Alabama this year because they didn't understand where the journey began. And it began with systemic racism, with slavery, and they needed to be able to connect all the dots. I was excited just to be given the opportunity to do something else with Glide. I really felt privileged, honored, you know, to be able to go and and I didn't know what to expect. We have historically brought 25 Frontline Glide staff members with us on this trip. Many of them lived experience with incarceration or addiction or homelessness. We learned early on the power of crossing lines that aren't usually crossed in America, of race and class and religion and education. We consciously call this journey a pilgrimage. We think about what it means ideally to move by foot from location to location. Every year we choose to go to Alabama because Alabama is a key site of where black people were enslaved, but also where the civil rights movement and liberation was found. The music really plays an important part in the civil rights movement and also plays an important part of how people became courageous in the face of imminent death every day. Our opening gathering of the pilgrimage is at the 16th Street Baptist Church to take in the brilliance and beauty of the music and the vision of the pastor, but also to feel the weight of the location. This was a site where in 1963, some white supremacists planted a bomb that ended up killing four little girls who were at church on Sunday morning. Following church services, we walked across the street to the Kelly Ingram Park, the site of the Children's Crusade during the Civil Rights Movement, where in one day, 900 children were arrested. While they were being arrested, the police aimed water cannons at them and allowed their police dogs to attack them as they were protesting.
We visited Ms. Sherry Bradley and Ms. Perman Hardy in Lounsboro to witness the amazing work that these fierce and fiery and funny activists are doing in what we call sewage justice work. The county gets water to the doors of homes and mobile homes, but does not take sewage away. So what you can imagine is you have kids playing in front yards where there's raw sewage and getting hookworm and other diseases. And so Ms. Bradley and Ms. Hardy are organizing septic tank by septic tank to deliver clean water and clean sewage to the citizens of Lowndes County. We gathered outside the St. James Hotel along the Alabama River in Selma as we prepared to walk across the Edmund Pettus Bridge. There we paused and reflected deeply about the meaning of this place and the meaning of this bridge and the protest that evolved into Bloody Sunday where the police brutally attacked people who were protesting for civil rights. And then we walked quietly, individually or in pairs across the bridge, summoning images of what had happened there and feeling deeply of the movement that was birthed there. We spent eight hours on campus at Tuskegee University, a historically black college. To go to Tuskegee and see all these young African-American men and women studying to become doctors, lawyers, accountants, both of these men, all they saw were black faces. They saw people who looked like them in an educational setting. When I first walked on the campus, I was like, look at all these black people here. Look at all these black students trying to grow, you know, trying to better their lives in a positive way. It was overwhelming. It brought a lot of joy. It brought a lot of hope. I come from a neighborhood where people like me, we're not, we're not succeeding in life. We're getting in trouble. We're not doing good with our life, but seeing just like other black people just doing good, doing something great, going to school, trying to get an education, trying to make something out of their life, that just made me happy. Cause I, I don't see that in my daily life. Because of that, Deshaun in particular, he wants to go to college. JJ talked about bringing all he learned from Men in Progress and Tuskegee back here in the community of San Francisco so he can help do more work here in the city and help other young African-American men who, like himself, may have gotten into some trouble along the way. We went to the opening of the Legacy Museum, which tells the birth story of slavery and its evolution to mass incarceration, and the National Memorial for Peace and Justice, which summons the memories of 4,400 known black victims of lynching. Just my God, I know his name. very emotional. I didn't know how rough it really was. I was able to feel the pain as much as I could, like to identify as much as I could with like the worst pain I ever complained about. It gave me chills just seeing how our people was treated. I shed tears on the trip. Just being able to learn some new knowledge about slavery, about people of my color. And I'm glad I was able to go see that because I did not have any idea that it would be that. It makes me think like I should be out here doing better for myself because they risk their lives for us to have a better outcome in life. It reminds me on some level just how black I am, if that makes sense. One of the things I truly enjoy about the Legacy Museum is they show the progression of slavery and mass incarceration. I never forget what it took for me to live the life that I live now. It's because of everybody that went before me. It's, it's, it's all of those people. And um, it's hard, it's, it's, it's hard, it's, 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 it's hard for me, so. Glide Center for Social Justice Alabama Pilgrimage is a transformational learning program that's focused on transforming oneself and community through understanding the history and how history impacts what we're going through today. 
from that Alabama trip. We have had close to 30 projects with UCSF that are helping the institution think more deeply and act more courageously. Meeting with um, unbelievably inspiring and devoted healthcare leaders who are swimming upstream in Alabama, fighting for racial justice and health equity in a very divided state. The people that came with us were so connective and they wanted to see all sides of how things are transpiring in the terms of what's happening racially and what's happening socially. There are some things that we found in Alabama that they're here in the Bay Area as well. Just because we're in this affluent, you know, big city, the same problems, the same stuff is still happening. The personal change is obvious and dramatic. To have an impact and be able to be kind of, you know, at the table where we can talk about how and what to do. To embrace Glide's principles of unconditional love and radical acceptance, I think if you can embrace those two concepts and really give yourself to the experience, you, you, you will you'll be transformed. In the Center for Social Justice at Glide, we define a pilgrimage as a journey of personal spiritual discovery that will forever change you. To organize with Glide, with UCSF, with organizations like us, to deliver deep change, to deliver more justice, more righteousness, more equity to people who are really struggling. And our hope by taking people on these journeys is that they will be forever changed and moved and propelled into action when they return.